Hi, and welcome to the Creative Treehouse. My name is Robin Broom, and I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the United States. Thanks so much for joining me in the treehouse today. Today, we have a fence fold card. It was just my first attempt to make one. I thought it was pretty cool. I decided to change up some of the the different tutorials that I was watching used, um, you just kind of laid things down with washi tape and adhered it all together. And I just, I, I didn't try that, but I just felt like it was um, a little bit more flimsy than what I wanted to do. So I utilized a window sheet in mine. So you've got a lot more sturdiness there. And I think it's just as easy, if not easier, to put together. So it could be that because my husband is a structural engineer that I wanted my fence to be a little bit more structurally sound. Don't know. But anyway, uh, I utilized the tulip dies. They are awesome. However, they are on the last chance product list as of this video. These are the dies. They're just awesome. They look a little odd, these little guys, but you'll see how we they kind of fold up and kind of layer together and you design your own tulips. It's pretty cool. So those are the tulip dies and we're also, we will also utilize the Stripes 3D folder. It comes in there's a set of two. It's stripes and splatter. And this one is also on that list, the last chance list. It I really, really like this particular one. I've utilized it a lot for a wood grain look. It's not designed necessarily for that, but that I've used it a lot because the lines, um, the little design lines are relatively close together. So it makes making embossing something to a smaller thing that to really work out well. So I liked this one. And if you don't have this one in your stash, another good one to add to your stash. The last chance, last chance list is uh, one of those that it goes away really, really quick. So if it's something that you kind of have your eye on, you need to grab it really quickly. And I'd love it if you don't have a demonstrator to um, click on things for to be able to order from me. So let's see what else I need to tell you about. All the dimensions will be on my blog, which is creativetreehouse.blog. And I think we can get into all the, the dimensions of the di various pieces and parts. So I started with a piece of eight and a half by five and a half, and I scored it at four and a quarter. Then I slid the paper over to the five and three quarter mark and I traded out my score blade for my cutting blade and I cut it right there. So you have one and a half inches here. You could also just decide to cut the two and three quarter inches off here. But to me, I was already, I had just scored. So I just slid it down to the five and three quarters and cut. So then you've got that part of the, the card. All right, you'll also need because I put backs on everything, you'll need backs to all of these pieces. And so the back to this one, although I said it was one and a half inches, it's a whole lot easier to make it just a 1 16th of an inch shorter. And that's because it's gonna tuck back here, but if it's exactly the same size, it's gonna end up um, popping out a little bit. So if you cut off a 16th of an inch, then that allows you to be able to butt it up against that crease right there, that score line. So this one ends up being, um, if you want to know, it's it's again the five and a half, and instead of one and a half, it's going to be. Let me check my notes. Yes, uh, one and seven sixteenths. So you math wizards already had figured that one out. So that's for this piece, and then you will need for the fence post or the the uh, horizontal pieces. You will need ten of these. There's five on the front. Let me show you the card again. You've got five pieces, one, two, three, four, five, and you also need five for the back as well. And they are three eighths of an inch wide, all 10 of them. Now, five of those for today's card, I ran through that embossing folder. And so they look more like pieces of fence post, or at least, at least they do to me. So um, instead of just being the 
the flat. But the flat ones, you do need the flat ones because that you have not run through the embossing folder because those are the back. So only the front is going to be embossed and the back will be flat. So, so you've got 10 of those and then your horizontal pieces of the fence post are these and they are three and a half inches and you can end up trimming a little bit of that off and they are one half of an inch, just half an inch in width on those. And those are your um, vertical, I'm mean, not vertical, is that right? Yes, vertical pieces, your fence post. All right, um, and then I said the, let's see where I put it, oh yes, the window sheet and the window sheet, let me take the, the little, the window sheet, they come in a package that you get 12, they're 12 by 12, and you get two in a package. And right now, the price is $5 for those two big pieces of window sheet. And I've cut mine at a 16th of an inch less everywhere so that it doesn't pop out anywhere, it doesn't show. So instead of five and a half by four and a quarter, for you mathematicians out there, you've already figured out that it's five and seven sixteenths by four and three sixteenths is what your window sheet is. So um, just a sixteenth of an inch less on either side and anything else. Then you, you need your tulip pieces and I used Highland Heather and I used two of the tulips and I used Old Olive for the greenery and we're going to also use st sponge daubers. So, and I've already sponged these, so those three can go together and these two will go together and we'll work on that also. And then the leaves, I use the sponge dauber on Old Olive on the leaves. So, and you can use as many or as few as you would like. So we'll do those in a few minutes. So I think that's everything and we can start to put our card together. So we'll start with the window sheet first. And what we'll need to do is I'm going to utilize my Stampin' Seal. And this is actually the Stampin' Seal Plus. And sometimes we have a love-hate relationship, the Stamp Seal and I do. So sometimes it's happy and I'm happy and everything's lovely. And other times it um, we, we have arguments. So... Uh, my very favorite adhesive is actually the, the liquid glue, which we will use. However, liquid glue does not work very well with the acetate. All right, so I'm going to lay this down. I'm going to bend it up against that score line. Make sure we're even. You basically have just a 1 32nd uh, little white showing. And once we get that exactly lined up, we can close that up. Okay, so now you have your window sheet and as you can see if in the light you can probably see that you um, see all of the adhesive that we have so we're gonna end up covering that up with the this shorter piece that we that we did in fact we can go ahead and do that right now while we're thinking about it let's see if my how my relationship is with my stamp and seal at the moment seems to be pretty good all right and Again, we needed that one to be just slightly smaller so that it does not overhang. And there you go. All right, so now we can take five of the pieces that we did and ran, had, I've already run it through that stripes uh, 3D embossing folder. And I'm gonna put one at the very bottom right here and I'll show you how I kind of make sure that you've got the the same, roughly the same spacing in there. So we've got this one, and then now I'm going to put one of those on. Okay. Towards the top, I'm going to leave a little bit of a space, not a lot, just a little. All right, so I've got that one down, and then I'm going to do one right in the middle, right between those two that I've already gotten down. And now I'll be able to put the next two pieces in between. Now I have used Stampin' Seal on all of these. And you don't have to run it across the whole thing. You just need just a few pieces. It's good, very strong adhesive. 
and then I'm going to put this one in between those two and we've got those so now you've got that part of the fence and I like the difference between it plain and looking a little bit more like a fence I like that it's relatively subtle but I, th I think it's a great difference okay now we'll take our fence post pieces here that are the half an inch wide and we're going to do a, a top on it we're going to give it more of a fence post look and I'm going to utilize this punch and I don't remember the name of it it came in a bundle uh, I think it's the Alphabest bundle it has um, little letters and numbers and so that's what I'm going to utilize but I'm not going to use it as a regular you would the regular punch way we're going to actually stick it in this way and just slide it up enough that it's all the way in there and then I'm going to pop it and it gives you that this but um I don't know what it is anyway <laughs> you give it it gives it that neat top so we've got that one and then this one as well and let's see if I can if you get it if you end up cutting the pieces a little bit longer than a half an inch wide it will not fit it exactly fits if you use the half inch all right, we got those extra pieces flying there. All right, <clears throat> and there's a little bit of extra length if you needed it. Now, I, another thing that I'm gonna do differently than my original card is I'm going to use um, dimensionals. And I think I will use my regular dimensionals and I'm going to adhere those vertical pieces on with dimensionals. So I'm gonna put one there and I think I'll put the other one here. And that's where that's gonna go once I pull the backs off. Let me do two more for the right hand fence post here. And you, you could probably add more. I've got the other one crooked, but I think it's fine. All right, I'm gonna pull the backs off and we will adhere our fence post. And there should be a little bit left over to trim off on the bottom there. I pull these backs off, do the same thing. You hear my dog barking in the background. It is spring has sprung and there are people out mowing and things and she wants to be out being a part of everything. All right, there. Okay, I like that a lot. I like the, I like the difference. It's, it's kind of a subtle difference, so, but I like that. All right, now we need to go through and hide all of our adhesive. We've, we've hidden it there, and so we now we need to hide it back here. So these are our pieces, our five pieces that do not have the embossing on them. And so we're just cover all of those up, and I am probably, just for the sake of the video, I'm just gonna put a couple of them on. And again, I used tear and tape again on this one. So I'm getting it not centered. All right, so, but anyway, they'll, they'll all be covered up like that and you will not be able to see that. Actually, let me, I've got one more I can probably stick on. And then I can do the other ones later off camera. All right, but I think it goes together very quickly. All right, now we get to have the fun of the flower. So let me take the base. And actually, while we have the base, let's go ahead and we can trim this. And I think I'm going to trim it a little, just a, pretty close to the, the bottom. Yep, I like that. Looks good. All right, now we'll move that out of the way. We'll bring out our flowers and our stems. And I'll just show you how I did the the daubering, which I think makes a difference, because if you can see the ones that are have been daubered and the ones that have not, it just makes a it makes a difference. So, and then you're just going to fold these pieces. It's a little bit obvious where to fold it, and once it's you folded it, then that gives you an opportunity to see exactly where you actually need to dauber it. So, I'm going to dauber here and here, pretty much just on, and I'm going to do it on the back. Pretty much just on the edge on that part and then we know that this is all, this was the forward piece once it's folded so we're gonna be sure we've got edging here and it just really 
adds to your flower. I find it pretty fun that as a paper crafter you get to sort of garden too so you can be a you can have a green thumb even though you might not in in real life so okay so that's the way that and let me do this this little one it, in, in slow motion I'm just pretty much doing like that across the just at an angle so that's how it's done and I just I like the it's not totally flat when you run it through the machine it does have um, little lines and things so let's see this one I believe is the one that I just set that one in yep and then this one I put two pieces inside this piece and this piece okay and then we can just kind of move it around and then I'm going to utilize if it's still not clogged up I'm, like I said before uh, the liquid glue is my very favorite adhesive but on little projects like especially the stem I find it difficult to use it um, so I am going to use this I put my liquid glue into this little bottle with a very fine nozzle and I think I'm going to like that a lot. All right, let me hold it down just for a second. Get it so. All right, and then the same thing with this one, and this one has a couple of pieces. So we'll get some glue on the back of that. And one more piece. Yeah, the ricky ticky sound is my puppy has given up barking at the back door and has come to join the festivities in here. Actually, I didn't need to put it on that section. It needs to come up a little bit further. All right. Yes, I end up usually making a ginormous mess with the liquid glue and it's all over me and my project, but I think I really like that. Okay, and then the same thing happens with the the greenery. We're using it. I think I need a short piece. Let's see. So let's take the short piece and I did the same thing with the old olive and the sponge dauber. And I might even need to do, let me see if I did the stems. I don't remember if I did the stems or not. All right, and the same thing you're mostly just going for the edges is what I did and you can see with it not done and done that it does it makes a difference so and you can use as much or as little it's it's relatively subtle because I'm using the same color as the cardstock in this case it's old olive and I'm happy to report that old olive and Highland Heather that we're using today are returning colors they have a big color revamp going on and we've just found out last week what those are all going to be so it's ex super exciting I need to put some more glue right there some wonderful colors are returning some of my all-time favorites like pretty peacock love 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 pretty peacock all right so we've got all the tulips ready we're going to bring our fence back in and we are going to now I'm going to utilize this fence post with the glue and I'm going to glue down make sure I got the right direction and this is so skinny that it's going to be just perfect for this little tiny nozzle here. And allow me not to get it absolutely everywhere. All right, and then I can cut off the end in a minute where I don't want it to be. All right, great. All right, now let's see which flower. I think I'll use, I'll put this flower up there. And because this is on dimensionals, I'm going to put this one up on dimensionals the fence post is and so I want it to be I think I'm just going to utilize one and see if if that's enough yes I like that all right and then you just got to kind of arrange I think I'll go ahead and trim off the bottom of my 
stem there and then we're going to kind of figure out where we want the rest of it to go. Our other flower probably about uh, maybe a little bit lower than that somewhere maybe in here and it just gets arranged and decide where everything needs to go and if we're where you need to where you need to cut and trim the flowers and leaves and things so if we did that and this something like that I've got I'm holding it down too too hard yeah more like that I think all right so I believe, since that's down, I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and trim this off. And I can put glue on this part. And I think I'll just leave it like that, just on the end. I think that'll be fine. Because we don't, the trick will be to make sure, since we worked so hard to get those pieces to not show glue, we don't want glue to just randomly glue and have it show. So I think that'll be, yeah, that looks great. All right, now the question is, do I put that one on dimensionals or not? And I say not on that one. So I need, I'm gonna go with the regular bottle and put a lot more. Okay, I'm gonna tuck that right in that one there. Terrific, all right, and then Let's see, we'll put this one here. Again, now we have to decide. I think again, I'm just gonna put liquid glue down on the bottom. And just be sure that it's not anywhere where it's gonna show through. And then I've got this other piece. Oh, I think I'm gonna change up the way I did it. And then Nope, I think I like that. Or we could trade it this way. Hmm. Maybe that way. So you get to be a flower arranger. Let's see. Mm. Yeah, we'll go with that. Looks good. Okay, so this will have regular glue here. Oh, this is fun because my for other one I had I had to glue in strategic places. So I think this one works really well. Now this one I think I'm going to go with some dimensionals. I think that would be a, a safer way to go. So I'm going to put a large dimensional here and a small one here if I have it. So let me lay this back down and decide yes and so i'm going to put one here great and then i need to uh, see if i have a, a mini dimensional and i do all right let's lay that back up like that and so he's gonna go right there pull the backs off and we have our leaf hopefully in place and not showing anywhere. Oh, perfect. Oh, love, love, love. And there's no, except for whoop, right there, there's no glue. So, awesome. And I can probably, yep. That's the nice thing about that liquid glue is that you can get it off. So that is wonderful, love it. Okay, so the only other thing that's missing would be the sentiment. And I honestly don't remember where I got this sentiment from. <laughs> so it's beautiful. I love the, the font on it. So I decided to change it up and I had a couple choices and I think I'm gonna try, as long as it works in that particular punch, I'm gonna try this one. So I'm using, using soft sea foam, which again is a color that is returning. And I'll use my Highland Heather ink. All right, and then I'm going to try and see if it's going to fit in there. I probably needed a gorgeous grape, actually, because this one's relatively pale. All right, and I'm utilizing the double oval punch, and I'm going to use, I think, uh, let's see. Let me, I'm going to cut this so that I don't waste the paper because there are, it's double. So, and then I'm going to 
utilize a sticky note. And we're going to run it through as a handle. There we go. And then run it through and see if it fits. Mm, I think I may have to trim it a little bit more, but I think it, I think it's going to fit. All right, let's try again. In that way, yeah, that'll work. All right, the best is yet to come. And what I was thinking on this one, I didn't do a very good job of stamping that one, um, is I was thinking about making it an Easter card. And I was thinking that I could still say, the best is yet to come. And then on the inside, say, he is risen. That was my thought on that. And I'm going to roll it across my stamp pad pop it up on dimensionals and other than hi uh, hiding those last pieces under there I think it's all completed and then you can leave a comment and let me know which one you like better do you like it with the embossed fence post or do you like it the plain one the best so because we've got both of them now and you can tell me which one you like better I like them both but I'd love to know, and I'd love to know if there are other flowers or things that you'd like to use. I've seen wisteria used, and that's beautiful. Um, I have a affinity for purple. I really like purple. So you just let me know, and be sure to not only leave a comment, but don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you have not. And for any of the measurements, you can go to my blog. And on my blog, you can also sign up for my newsletter. So you can find out all the different things that are happening in the treehouse. Later this month, there's going to be um, an online class uh, where we do a, it's called Kit Creations. And we're focused this time on the framed florets. We'll always be focused on a, a particular bundle. So we have lots of fun in the treehouse, either in person or online. And thanks so much for watching the video today. And we'll see you next time in the treehouse. Okay, bye-bye.